Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy Easter weekend. I hope you all have an amazing one. Um, first of all, I want to apologize because this was supposed to go um, up on my channel on Friday, but I just had a lot of issues with the video itself. The, uh, the camera wasn't focusing and uh, the sound wasn't clear and I had Juno and Agni like losing their shit. So anyway, um, it's here now and I hope it's informational, it's um, helpful to any of you that is um, doing the breastfeeding thing and yeah let's jump straight into it. My journey with breastfeeding is a bittersweet one and I'm going to try and share as much information with you guys as possible and um, share my experiences with regards to the challenges I faced and the challenges that you can actually work around and it really isn't that deep. So, once um, after Juno was born, 20 minutes after he was born, the midwives gave him to me and said, right, you should think about um, feeding him because he's gonna be really hungry, rightly so. And um, pre-pregnancy, pre-delivery, not pre-pregnancy, pre-delivery and all throughout my pregnancy, I just thought, you know what, I have this vision of not having to worry about breastfeeding or anything like that because I just thought, as a mother, the maternal instinct would kick in and you'd know exactly how to handle it, right? I mean, it's as simple as that. That's what I thought, but it was something that I really, really, really struggled with and I wish I spoke out about it and asked for help. Um, so 20 minutes into giving me Juno and cleaning me up and everything, they were like, try and feed him. So I did what I thought was the right way. I, um, I put him to my breasts and nothing was happening. I tried putting my nipple in his mouth, nothing was happening, and he wasn't able to suckle, he wasn't able to latch, it didn't feel right, it wasn't happening. Um, so, an hour in, I already started feeling like absolute shit, and all these thoughts were going through my head thinking, you know what, you've already failed as a mother, like you can't even breastfeed your child, like what is even the matter with you? It's, it, there was nothing wrong with me. Um, Juno was perfect, my nipples were perfect, but they were just too big for his little mouth. And that is surprisingly an issue that a lot of mothers have where your nipples are too big for the baby's mouth and there is a certain technique and a certain, um, like they teach you certain maneuvers that you can get your baby to latch. And so that's the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about, latching. Latching is really important and it is vital, vital that if you and your baby are struggling to um, feed straight away like don't worry about it because you're new to the job your baby is new to his or her role and you need to be not stressed out about it ask for help call the midwives and like 90 percent of the time not even 99 percent of the time they will help you unfortunately the hospital that juno was born in they weren't very helpful in the maternity ward only because Either it was stupidly busy and um, I don't know, they just kind of left me to it and I wish I had uh, like pro probed them a little bit more to help me and show me the techniques. I had a breastfeeding consultant come in. We were there, okay, so hold on. So Juno and I were there for like a whole week um, before we had to come back because he had um, borderline jaundice and needed light therapy. So we were there after he was born for like a week. And in that week, like I had one breastfeeding consultant that came in and just handed me a pump and said, look, you just need to pump. So all this while I've already started 
bottle feeding Juno and I just felt like something was taken away from me in that week of not having the breastfeeding support that I needed. So with Agni, when she was born, I made sure that, you know, I was relentless with asking for help. So with Juno, we did eventually latch and once we latched, it was great. But when we did latch, it was at least a month in. You know, I tried and tried and tried. And the days that I would try, I'd be frustrated and I would cry and I would get stressed out. And I would think, oh my God, I'm such a bad mother that I can't even breastfeed my child. What if bottles were not available? What if I got stuck somewhere and I didn't have a feed? I wouldn't even be able to feed my own baby because I don't know how to latch like the baby struggling to latch and I don't know how to maneuver it into the into his, maneuver my nipple into his mouth and it was just horrible and um it it didn't make me feel like a happy mother and you know the first first year of having a new baby especially when you're a first time mother is the most magical year of your freaking life okay and to not to have had that taken away from me due to so many reasons, I just feel like I was robbed. But anyway, latching. It is the most important thing in your breastfeeding journey because if your baby does not latch or you don't know or you're unaware of the techniques on how to maneuver your nipple into his or her mouth, um, it's gonna be tricky because there are so many things that can happen if the baby hasn't latched on properly. Baby isn't getting, obviously, the milk second you're going to end up with sore nipples and crack nipples which are hella painful and no amounts of cream can help that okay can help take that pain away so make sure you get your midwives or any of the help that you have around you for the first few days at the hospital to make sure that you have aced that latch um and that's what i did with agni we were there, we were at the hospital for four days, um, four, four days? Yeah, four days, and every, every day that we, we were there, every two hours that she needed to feed, I would call my midwife and she would be by the end of my bed watching me do it and guiding me and showing me other techniques and being really supportive. Uh, Agni was born in Epsom General in Surrey and I just want to give a shout out to all the midwives that helped me in the maternity ward um, with the breastfeeding. It was really what I needed, what made me feel confident and what made me feel like this is amazing. This is exactly what I would have loved for Juno. Um, but you know, doesn't matter. You do your best and um, yeah. So we caught, once we conquered latching, um, the midwives showed us like different techniques of breastfeeding, like holding holding the baby like a rugby ball. My, my shirt's like falling off. Um, holding the baby like a rugby ball, just underneath your arm, and um, yeah, it was it was awesome. Um, but also, what really helped me was having a nipple guard. So the moments that she would struggle to latch. Because it's only natural that babies do struggle to latch in the first week or so of being born. If When she was struggling to latch, I would just put the nipple guard on, which then protects my nipples being sore and depending on how often you're feeding. And yeah, she just latched onto it and uh, off we went. So make sure that you're getting a lot of help in latching before you are i don't know before you get sent home back to your family um before you get released from the hospital after all the checkups are done make sure you've spoken to your midwives if you if you are considering breastfeeding that you've got the latch right and they are more than helpful if you ask if you don't ask you don't get right so yeah latching now latching's done lactation 
With Juno, I wasn't lactating at all. I did everything I could to, um, I think, to produce more. I wasn't producing enough milk. I wasn't eating nutritiously. I was tired all the time. And um, yeah, it just, I just wasn't lactating. With Agni, I made sure that before every feed, um, I was organized, like super duper organized when it came to um, our feeding times. I always had porridge in the fridge that I would make the previous night and that was my sustenance during all my feeds, like pots and pots and pots and pots of porridge, bowls of like, smoothie bowls and I would just put porridge into the smoothie bowl put it in the fridge and then you'd have like a smoothie overnight porridge situation that you just munch on while you're feeding just make sure that you always have fruits and nuts and nut milk around you um, and you are like you're forever eating you know what like when you breastfeed you get this hunger that is insatiable um so yeah i was eating so much porridge and i was lactating too you need to feed yourself to produce milk and just not feed yourself with i don't know um junk don't like drink copious amounts of coke or anything like that um, in order to lactate, you need to, I don't know what the science behind it is, but the more you feed your baby, the more you lactate. Like your, the glands, the milk producing glands just know that, okay, she's, she's like doing overtime on her feeds. So we need to make sure that we are producing for the baby to keep eating and eating and eating. For that to happen, that is energy burning right you burn what 500 calories or something like that in one breastfeeding session so you need to make sure that you're sustaining yourself um food nutritious food eating tons of greens even if you don't have the time just steam the greens put it in your fridge make shit ton of lentils that's what i did and um porridge a ton of porridge make um a tip is make smoothies and put it into little containers and then when you are ready for like few hours before your feed or even overnight just dump some oats and chia seeds in them and that's it that's your like overnight porridge situation during your feeds and it keeps your energy levels up it's great in so many other nutrients that you need when you're feeding your baby and you will lactate as well when you have nutritious food so pumping to aid more lactation pump when you can when Agni was asleep like when Agni would sleep I would just pump even if it's just like two ounces even if it's just an ounce just pump and keep it so if you want to have a quick nap you can just give your partner or anyone that's around you like if you've got family helping you out solid if you don't um then you can just pump in the bottles put the bottle in the fridge and then a couple of hours before your baby wakes up leave the bottle at room temperature and give it to your husband to feed halas like you're you're sweet so let's talk positions um there are so many positions that you can try while breastfeeding. The ones that I really, really loved with both Juno and Agni um, is lying down on either of my sides and it worked perfectly for both Juno and Agni. Um, sorry, give me a second, she's just waking up. I'm gonna get her out. So positions, yes. Uh, my favorite positions and the positions that felt more comfortable for me when they were first born was the baseball position where you hold your baby through your arm. Let me see if I can do it with you. Can I do it with you? Can I show them how the baseball position works? So, 
Um, you hold the baby like, sorry, <laughs> like that. Um, rest the baby's head. I hope I'm doing it right. Ouchie, 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 ouchie. Um, so you're holding the baby like that and rest their back on a pillow and then of course like they're right there for you to start feeding. And that worked so amazingly for me and Agni that I, um, that's, that's what I did for the entire one month of her life. I just fed her in the baseball position and I, rugby ball, not baseball, sorry, rugby ball position. And if you, if you start feeling sore and if you start feeling uncomfortable with your feeding positions, just change them. It's a nice change for you. It's a nice change for the baby so they don't get used to just one sort of position and get, um, what do you say, get um, conditioned to that one position. So change your positions and make it fun as well. Another, um, I think another very common, yeah, another very, very common thing that first time mothers and mothers in general, I think after you've given birth to a baby, worry about and constantly ask is, are they getting enough? And I've asked my midwife this so many times with both Juno and Agni and, um, I've spoken to my aunt, my mom, my grandma, all the women I know, and they've all said the same thing. Don't worry about the baby. The baby lets you know when they are hungry. So, for example, um, when, when Agni was around a month, she used to wake up every two hours. Oh, wait, not she used to wake up. I used to wake her up every two hours. And then one day I let her sleep for like five hours and I was so stressed out because I was like, oh my God, she hasn't fed. Are you going to yuck up everything? <laughs> um, she hasn't fed and I was stressing out and um, my husband was just like, look, it's fine. If she's sleeping, just let her sleep. A well like rested baby is trust me, a happy baby. It's just like a well-fed baby is a happy baby. And she is 100% a happy baby. She sleeps well and she feeds when she wants to. She lets me know. She's been very vocal since, um, like since forever really. Um, she will let me know that she's hungry and will pr proceed to feed. She'll go back to sleep or she'll just continue to play. So don't worry about how much your baby is baby is getting if you're solely breastfeeding them. Um, breastfeed often, breastfeed um, while you're watching TV, breastfeed them while they're even asleep. I used to do it all the time. I knew it was coming up to like feeding time and I don't want her to like wake up screaming in hunger. So I would just pick her off the crib, put her on my boob and then she'll just feed, continue to sleep, happy days. Initially, I thought breastfeeding was going to be, um, with Juno especially, before he was born, it was just going to be, you know, natural, perfect, it was going to be effortless, it was going to be easy, it, it's just, what is it, what do you call it, it's just your maternal instincts, like, it's biologically impossible for a mother to fail at breastfeeding, oh, how wrong I was how wrong I was. It was exactly the opposite of what I have just said. It was stressful, it was, oh, it was so tiresome and effortless. I mean, are you joking? Are you joking? Like, sorry, but with Juno, it was effort because, um, yeah, it was long things. And it took a while for me to get used to it took a while for me to get my head around it not, it being okay to not solely breastfeed, you know. And you know what? I had so many days where I would just cry and harp on about how I'm not able to breastfeed and how I'm not able to this with breastfeeding, that breastfeeding. And 
My husband just said, look, the end result is that the baby needs to be fed, whether it's by breast or by bottle. You know, we all want our baby to be fed. So don't, don't sweat it. If you're, if you're having a hard time breastfeeding in the first couple weeks of your baby being born, ask for help. And that's what I didn't do. I asked, I, I didn't ask for help. With Agni, it was the opposite. I was constantly asking for help and it worked out for the best. And I love breastfeeding her. I love it. We love it. We love it. Breastfeeding props. So we've covered lactation. We've covered, um, we've covered latching, lactation, positions and props. Okay, let's talk about props. Breastfeeding props are a godsend. I, um, I struggled with her in the first month where after we came home, my boobs, my nipples got really, really sore. And um, luckily I had a uh, nipple guard, um, nipple guard. And that's what I used for the sessions that I was, it was only on one breast. So the other breast was just her latching on as normal. But the other one, I had to use the nipple guard, and it worked fine. She didn't, she didn't like push it away, or she didn't want to feed from that. It was just normal, and it was, it made life easier, and it gave my um, pain a little bit of a break because it hurt. It hurt, and no amount of castor oil or coconut oil helped me get rid of that soreness and the pain. Um, they were cracked, they were bleeding, and um, yeah, it was just really painful, and I would just lay in bed massaging them, massaging them, massaging them, and my cousin told me to go and get a nipple guard, and I did, and it saved my life. So get yourself a nipple guard if you find yourselves having sore nipples, just keep them around just in case. Um, breast pumps, manual or automatic. I prefer manual because they're not as noisy and uh, you can watch Netflix and you know they're not making noise, especially if your baby's asleep in the middle of the night at like 2 a.m. or something and you're trying <laughs> and you're um, trying to pump uh, using an electric one. I prefer manual because you can just pump, pump, pump. They're easy to clean as well, I find. Um, so yeah, breast pumps, amazing. In terms of massaging my nipples when they got really sore or red or anything or hurt or even dry, I used um, mm. almond oil and coconut oil. They worked brilliant and she wasn't really um, annoyed with the taste that she got afterwards while she fed from me. So um, try that, try and enjoy breastfeeding because it is very, very special when you do do it and I wish I did that with Juno, I didn't stress out about it, um, but yeah, it's one of those things that you live and learn, right? And now, breastfeeding is something I love doing, I don't care where I do it, I don't care who's around me when I do it, um, yeah, I love it, I love it. Um, it's comforting for the both of us, it's playful for her sometimes, and um, yeah, I could just lay there in bed with her for hours, breast, well not hours breastfeeding her, but just with her breastfeeding, playing, and then falling asleep, and it's the best, it's the absolute best. I hope I've covered things that are helpful and spoken to you about my challenges a little bit more. I know this was a little bit, if this video was haphazard, I'm really sorry, but I just wanted to keep it um, like a chatty one and keep it, yeah, keep it real. I didn't want it to be like too rehearsed or anything like that. So I hope I've covered the topics that a lot of I hope the topics that I covered were um, sort of helpful and if you have any questions regarding my breastfeeding journey, uh, you want to know anything more, just comment in the comment box below. There's more in the description. Um, 
anything that I've missed out, I'll put in the description box below. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me on this topic. And, um, oh, one more thing. Don't let people judge you for feeding your child the way you want to feed your child, okay? If you're bottle feeling, if you're bottle feeding your child, go for it, all right? And if you're breastfeeding solely, yay to you too. Do not be the judgy asshole that judges mothers for not breastfeeding or judges mothers for bottle feeding, okay? We're doing our best and you know what? Mothers make the world a better place. I'm sorry, but they do, right? Mothers make the world a better and safer place, in my opinion. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me. And if you have any questions, just pop it in the comment section below. And if I've missed out anything, it's all, all going to be in the description box below. I've got to go and feed this one because she's getting a little bit ratty. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!